Now, the important thing to imagine here is that you have to pretend that you are living in the water, okay? Now, if I just looked around at this river and you were imagining you were living like a little fish in the water, you've got to look and think, where are the different places that you could live? It's like living in a city. Uh, some places in the city are right in the middle of the town, others are on the river, others up on the hill. So there are different areas that we could live in a city. It's exactly the same in a river and this is where we want to go and visit those different suburbs in the river, those different places and we're going to go and sample the different people who live in those different suburbs, the different creatures living in different parts of the river. Okay, so if we looked around here and we looked across there you could see just in front of us here there's a flat pond like area. The water's quite still but look on the surface over there. Can you see those pond skaters? You see them? Okay. Now we're not going to find those guys down where the water's flowing strongly. So that's one group of characters which we might not have noticed earlier. But here they are the pond skaters just skating around on the pond as it were, on the flat surface of the water. Now if we would, so this is sort of one habitat which would be the sort of surface of the water. Right close by over here on the edge of the water and on the far side we can see those reeds okay in there we're going to find a whole different type of community of little uh, aquatic insects living in there that's where we're going to typically find the things like our dragonflies our damselflies and those sorts of things and often the water bugs as well they love sitting in there, water scorpions uh, diving beetles and so on they love that sort of habitat what about down there? We see that it's going over some rocks. Okay, the water's tumbling over some rocks there. It's a little cobble or a riffle habitat we call it. And that's really where we would find something different again. Now if we just jumped in and sampled this pond area, we'd only get one limited, very small picture of what's here. Okay. But when we get to a river, we want to allow that river to tell us as much as it can, to tell us as, as much of its story as possible, tell us how healthy it is. To do that, we have to go and visit all the people living in that river, all the, the different organisms and where they live. So what will be important when you go sampling with your nets is to go and visit, like in a city, go and visit all the different suburbs and ask the people, go and visit them, collect some of them, and then when we go and look in the tray, we'll actually see the differences that might be here. Because what we don't want to have happen is that we go and only sample a little area and then we don't get the full picture and we think, ah, oh, there must be something wrong with the river, it's polluted. But in fact, it's just because we've been a bit lazy and haven't bothered to go around and visit everyone, all the different places that people or insects might be living. Okay, so we've got three main, what we call biotopes or biological habitats that we're going to sample. It's what we would call the stones habitat, okay? The rocks, the riffles, the cobbles, and typically it's a stone that you can turn over with your hand. Then it's this vegetation habitat on the side, on both sides of the river, the vegetation. And then what we call the gravel or the sediment samples, the sediment area, gravel, sand and mud. Okay, so we've got three main habitats that we're going to look at.